I'm coming to you guys today comfortable, relaxed, and ready to talk about the truth. So let's talk about it. Hello, I'm Judy, the organizer and creator at Ruskin Space. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. So one of the popular questions I get when it comes to organizing is, what do I need to get organized? How can I get organized? And a lot of times when I hear that question, of course I ask the person certain questions to figure out what best like organizing plan they would need. But a lot of times the vibe that I get is people are expecting some type of like magical response, something that kind of takes them away from their own responsibility, which is what, which is why I'm here today. Like I wanted to create a video that kind of brought the truth about organizing because you know what, let me put up my leg. We're gonna get comfortable. I got some pajama pants on, but that's neither here nor there. Sometimes it's important that people know the truth so that as they understand and hear the truth, they can move forward knowing what to do. My therapist taught me, once you accept the fact that you are the problem, then you can create the solution. And I literally use that thought, that statement, that idea on everything. So I say that to say the simple rule when it comes to organizing, the very simple rule, the number one simple rule, hear me guys, when it comes to organizing is you can't have too much stuff in your space. Let me repeat that. I know it's a lot. What does that mean? Explain. You can't have too much stuff in your space. You can't. Gotta put my leg down. Okay, you know what? Let me show you an example. Here you see two square boxes. There's square one and square two. In square one, you see a few items inside the box. This means if you were to place these items in a closet, in a cabinet, it would fit and you probably won't see it. In the next box, we have a lot of stuff in it. There's so much stuff that it's coming outside of the box. This means regardless if you were to put some of these items away in a closet, under a cabinet, in a garage, you still have so much stuff that it's seeping outside of the box. Square number two shows you that there's way too much things in this box. Therefore, it's seeping outside, which means you have to declutter. A lot of times the items that we have in our space, honestly, have no value. We tend to hold on to things because of the possibility of using it in the future or what if something happens, therefore I would need said item. There's so many excuses we tell ourselves that prevent us from letting go of things. And because of that, our homes are starting to fill up with so much clutter and it's starting to affect the way we live in our homes. Your home is supposed to be your sanctuary. It's supposed to be a place that you come into, you enjoy, you relax. And because of that, it's important that you create the home that you want to live in. And if you've watched any of my videos, you see or you've heard me say this, declutter first, then organize. Hell, in my banner, it says declutter first, then organize second, because based off what I've seen in so many homes, we have too much shit. So with that said, a few weeks ago, I showed you guys different ways you can declutter your home because we are not a monolith. In order for us to maybe uh, start a new habit or grasp a concept, we have to do things that work for us. So two of the decluttering styles I believe work for most is either to declutter like by like. So basically you collect all the like items you have either in your room or in your entire home and then you go through it. You basically decide what items you want to keep, which makes it a lot easier for you to get rid of the ones you don't want to keep. And with this style, it does help you see the items that you actually love and cherish and value compared to the ones that you don't. And it's a lot easier to get rid of those items. And then the second one is to work in sections. So for example, let's say you're going to work in a bedroom rather than decluttering the entire bedroom, which can be overwhelming. You start with the drawers. You declutter the drawer first, maybe one drawer first, and then either you stop and do something else or you continue and do the entire drawer. This again makes it so much easier for you to make those decisions that can be difficult 
at one time and in a short amount of time compared to making a lot of decisions at one time for a long period of time. You know, at the end of the day, decluttering is a very mental task. As simple as it may seem, it requires that you think a lot. There's a lot of decisions you have to make, especially because a lot of the items that we're making decisions on carry a lot of emotional baggage that we choose to put on these items, which is why I suggest working in small sections or decluttering things that are all the same and doing that at one time than the other styles that I've mentioned in that video. So look, trust me, I understand how difficult this is. I understand. I grew up in a very small apartment with five people in one bedroom. So you can only imagine how much clutter we had in that apartment. So when we moved into our second apartment that had two bedrooms, a few years into it, Hurricane Ike happened and we lost at least 85% of items in that apartment. And I realized at that very second when we had to go back into the apartment and see if anything was salvageable that most of the items I had here, I didn't even care for. They weren't valuable. These were just items that I held onto because I grew up pretty poor and I put a lot of emotions and a lot of feelings in these items. But once it was destroyed, it was destroyed and there was literally nothing I can do about it. And from that experience, I learned how my attachment issues was due to how I grew up or the value that I put on these items that really had no value because once it was gone, it was gone and I was able to cope with that and then move forward. So maybe you're ready to declutter, right? You're ready to declutter and now you're just trying to figure out, okay, now that I have these piles of items that I want to get rid of, what do I do with it? Okay, so here are some places you can send your decluttered items. So number one, and we probably have heard of this, but you can take them to, of course, your local charity. There's big charities out there who are willing to accept your goods. Of course, before you send these items away, make sure they are in good quality. I'm not saying they have to be in pristine or like new quality. Just make sure they're not destroyed because of course, once you send it to these charities, they're going to throw it away and it's going to eventually go into the landfill. So make sure you do your due diligence before you do let them go or discard them. Number two, another place you can take them to are shelters. I personally like taking my items to shelters because shelters are going to use those items. A lot of times they are looking for items for their residences and that item that you send to them literally goes straight to the residence. So take a look at local shelters in your city and see what items they're willing to accept. They usually have them posted on their website, which makes the process so simple since you know what item they are willing to accept. So another great way is to give your decluttered items to your family and friends. I found this to be such an amazing way to give away items that are beautiful, that are great quality items to people who are actually going to appreciate and like it and use it. So I tend to do this when it comes to a lot of my organizing products or home decor items that I just don't want. Um, a lot of times they appreciate it, they use it, and that just makes me feel a lot better than just throwing it away or even giving it to charities that are going to sell it. But of course, if you do have items that are in good condition, you should definitely sell it. There's so many platforms out there that allow you to sell your items and it's pretty simple to sign up. Of course, you're gonna have to give a lot of these platforms per a percentage, but you're able to make money from them. So I think it's kind of a win-win. <laughs> Let me put my, my leg back up here. <sighs> Why was that so hard? <laughs> Let's put her down. <laughs> to close this out, if you're someone who wants to organize your home, before you go on those platforms to get inspired, before you buy organizing products, please don't buy organizing products yet, before you even measure your space, make sure you declutter your space. Make sure you get rid of all those items that no longer bring value into your life today. The shit that you don't need. Go through it, get rid of it. If you notice that your space still looks cluttered, get rid of more, take it to those charities, those shelters, sell them, and then organize. That's pretty much it. Hopefully I made sense in this video. I feel like I was everywhere, but I feel like it still came together at the end. Let me know if this is an issue for you and let me know if this video helped you at all. So you already know what time it is. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so very much for watching this video. And as always, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye.